there guys and welcome to another Factorio Friday Facts discussion number 329 campaign reassessment and I am joined again by Bombug. Hello everyone. And uh, yeah so we're just gonna knock this out pretty quick it's pretty straightforward uh, written by several guys. Uh, first off the merch store is open um, so they took a break over the holidays and new year and they've now restocked their Factorio so on patches they showed a few friday packs ago um so if you didn't get those in time you can get some now that's good uh and then the rest of this mostly is about campaign reassessment which they've mentioned a little while ago in like friday facts 327 so two ago um so learnings from the introduction slash new player experience after deciding to cancel that uh, they took some time to assess what we learned here are just a few of the points that we took away from the experience um, players dislike being told that they must restart. Players, ironically, don't have regrets after they restart. It is valuable for new players under 30 hours to rebuild one to three times. Lowering player constraints increases design difficulty. Uh, people like Compilatron to be there. People don't like when Compilatron does anything for them. Um, so, players don't like being told... Okay, so... Interesting. Okay, so points one and two kind of, like, conflict, but I guess it's just that they don't, like, actually blatantly being told that they need to restart. Yeah, it's, uh... It feels bad to restart every tutorial, right? Like, you don't want to finish and then start new. Mm -hmm. But once you get going, I mean shoot i do it all the time now where i'm just like oh i'm just gonna start a new map i want to <laughs> want to do something new i feel good about it every time right if you see right. the progress but yeah i don't like it when a tutorial forces me to restart How yeah that makes that? sense totally understand that um so in addition to those self-motivated discovery of new mechanics is a more important part of factorial than actually using the new mechanics uh this means letting the new player do things the hard way and not rushing them to the realization that there is a better way. For example, veteran players know not to handcraft science packs for 30 minutes while standing still, but forcing a player to discover this by artificially not allowing them to handcraft lessens the Factorio experience. Um, which I would, I would mostly agree with. Um, as long as they are told at some point not too far in that there is another way to do it. Uh, just because, like, Personally, I'd be pretty upset if I just spent 30 minutes handcrafting and, like, yeah. thought I couldn't do anything else and then just realized I could. Like, I'd like to... I think that artificially not allowing them to handcraft would is a bad method, as they say, but I think if you're going to let them do that, you should at least kind of point them in the right direction, at least, like, pretty soon in. Yeah, I think a lot of the mechanics are just... There's so many mechanics to learn when you start playing that your brain may not think of everything immediately. Um, in particular, for me, a hard one was inserting coal into boilers. Mm -hmm. uh, I did not think to do that for a long time. I, I didn't really realize that you could insert things into stuff other than chests and stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, and then when I did think about it and I tried it, uh, I couldn't get coal to insert because it only inserts when it's low, right? And I was, yeah. uh, you know, I had 20 coal in there and was like, okay, well, why isn't it filling up to 50? So if they could show in some way, like when you start up the level, have like a couple of little gifts or something showing, you know, oh, here's this person's pipeline moving creating some science and then you know it flies over and it shows them creating a or inserting coal into their boilers and mm -hmm. just kind of show players once they're familiar with okay this is what this building is and what it looks like and what it does show them a little bit of what it can really be yes exactly. and then let them discover how to really do it themselves but show them hey this is possible look at this line of science packs uh going over to a lab how did they get a line of science packs? Oh, they must have been automating it, not handcrafting. Yeah, you know? exactly. I think that's a really good point. It's like kind of showing them like a general picture. And then from there, they can figure out 
like what they need to do but i think some direction is definitely needed yeah um otherwise it's not really a tutorial um (laughs) so then we move on to the campaign conundrum um, while they were working on the introduction to MPE, we were also researching and designing what we wanted from a full featured campaign. The game already had a campaign, which took the player up until advanced circuits, but there was a feeling that we could do better. For the last year, they've been working on and off to implement the design they came up with um, from here on called Expanding Campaign, um, as they talked about quite a few Friday facts ago. More specifically, the design was trying to remove the feeling of loss progression that comes from starting a new level and being forced to build a new factory from scratch. After the introduction in PE was canceled, we took the holiday period to reassess if this goal was worth pursuing and thought we should at least prototype some alternate solutions before committing completely to one design. The prototype came together very quickly this weekend because we were, they were able to use a lot of stuff from the expanding campaign prototype. Now we have two prototypes and wanted to present the ideas behind them. So first, we have expanding campaign. Um, basically different areas. So first area is like red science. Second area is like green science and like automobilism second area is just train or third area sorry is just trains definitely good to dedicate pretty much an entire section to trains um and then fourth area is a ton of military science oil blue science advanced oil processing bots and tanks and then area five is purple science yellow science and the rocket uh and then this description here, the main uh, this is the main prototype that we've been working on so far. A single map would start small but grows after each objective is complete. This would emulate free play gameplay that the player can build very large bases and expand the directions they want, but with the quest objectives to steer the player towards building the rocket. Technology and progression are preserved perfectly since we never ask the player to start again. As a result, the player can build a really big factory. This prototype focuses more on the long-term problem solving that free play requires, such as deciding where your next outpost will be. The main problem, though, is that the end of each chapter, the number of different situations the player could have gotten themselves into is near infinite. This makes it very difficult to predict the state the player is in and construct an appropriate challenge. Clear, clever objective and map design should be able to mitigate this issue. So, what are your thoughts on this? Definitely, they are right on the number of different situations the player could have gotten themselves into is near infinite. Uh, oh my gosh, the, the things they must consider, you know, the, the player could run out of the first patch of coal before they get to the trains somehow, right? Mm-hmm. And maybe then the player doesn't even know where coal is on the map and they just soft lock themselves, right? Mm-hmm. So um, I would say a big one that they need to consider with Area 4 having all the military science and stuff uh, and trains coming before that. Uh, I kind of feel like a lot of players will get stuck just endlessly fighting biters and not actually being able to properly use the trains mm-hmm. uh, because they haven't even gotten to military science yet, right? Yeah, that's a really good point, actually. Yeah, I, uh, new players spend so long just slowly building up pollution without actually progressing very much, right? Yeah. That biters are kind of a bigger problem for them. At least they were for me. Yeah, exactly. Um, oh, that's a good teach point. them how to fish. Teach them how to fish and use fish. Yeah, there you go. Um, the only, like, they don't... I wonder, you would think that this would include enemies. They don't mention that there's enemies here, but you would think there would be. Um, like, I don't know, it's hard to tell. Like, I don't know if they want you to fight things, or even though you have military science, maybe they just want you to know how to make military science. Um, yeah if this is going to be a free play style map that they get to control the layout of the map then certainly they can tweak it so fighters aren't as big of a problem right mm-hmm. but yeah or if they want you to fight them then they can make them a big problem yeah exactly um so i mean honestly i know this is, this is the last touch on this section this is just my personal thing and i know it would probably be it just makes too many areas but I feel like that's a lot for Area 4 because Blue Science has been, like, forever probably, like, the biggest stepping stone in the game. And add on mm-hmm. to that, like, Advanced Oil, which isn't exactly simple, um, or Robots, for that matter. Um, I feel like that's just so much. Like, I feel like the Blue Science, Advanced Oil, and Robots 
almost need to be their own section. Um, because cramming all that in there along with oil and military science is just yeah. so, so much. That is a ton. Plus, I mean, there's the two steps of oil, right? You've got the basic oil and then the advanced oil. So as soon as the player learns how to deal with one, they've got a second one coming along. Yeah, which may be really overwhelming. Because, like, if I just learned how to do oil, I'd want to see what oil actually, like, does on its own before then being told I need to do, like, an advanced version of it. Uh, not to mention that if you do it this, the how they have it, um, it almost, at least to me... Um, gives the impression that basic oil processing is just like useless, which is what they don't want, which is the reason they made the oil changes to begin with a while ago. Because mm -hmm. um, it's like if you're given oil and you complete that, and the next step you get blue science, and you're just like, oh well, here's a, here's a new oil thing. It's like, at least to me, that gives the impression of oh well, then the first one I did is basically useless if you're giving this next one like right away. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that's not really the vibe you want to give but but how do they get around that like there there is a lot of stuff happening around blue science well does breaking it up into sections help a lot i feel like you know, breaking what it, can they do i think just moving blue science and advanced oil into the next area helps that because if it's all in the same area because like the way i'm understanding this is that like a new area unlocks once they complete the objective uh yeah I think is how that they read it. Right. Yeah, it grows after each objective is complete. Is I feel like if you have blue science and advanced oil in a separate section, that it kind of is like, okay, well, maybe this is just a fair bit later in the game, you know, where I would get this advanced oil recipe. But with it all being in area four, to me, it just indicates like, oh, okay, well, this is just something that like I should just get right away just and just like ignore normal oil processing. Type yeah, of thing. I see what you're saying. That sounds pretty good. Yeah, so they can separate it like that. Mm -hmm. And then the last section here, the separate level campaign. So level one, it's two, three, four, five. Wait, okay. So basically, so this is like separate levels, and they've kind of separated things a little bit more of how I was saying. They've combined trains, green science, and automobilism or cars in general in one section and then done oil and military together and then blue and the other things together. Um, so then this one is consisting of approximately five separate missions, each with an interesting starting condition at the start of the level, all technologies available in the last mission are pre-researched and the players given a new subset of the remaining technologies to be researched. Every level the player needs to build a new factory, they will have some starting items and the game plays about short term problem solving. This would be very different from fee play and similar to what, People expect from traditional campaign content. If the player fails or wants to try a different strategy, they can restart the level and not lose a lot of progress. Um, players need the the problem is players need to rebuild the factory each level, repeating things they have already done. This is especially problematic in a game like Factorio. We imagine that this issue can be mitigated by making the starting conditions interesting. Uh, so, quick thoughts here. Hmm. Definitely feels more like a standard tutorial, mm -hmm. you know, and kind of railroaded a little bit. Mm, I really don't like the idea of just restarting each time. Yeah. Uh, I like, I mean, how should I say it? When, when I started, it took me several attempts to get into Factorio because of stuff like this. Mm -hmm. You know, I would play it get a little bit into some of the tutorial stuff, uh, kind of lose interest, and then pick it up again a couple months later until it finally stuck. So I feel like the free play for me is more enticing. Um, obviously, they're talking here about merging the two together and trying to get the best of both worlds, um, and I think that's that's a good idea. If they can get some interesting conditions in there uh, and let you keep a little bit of your progress but also feel good about starting fresh then that's that's a good thing you know like if they introduce the trains really well and outposting it won't feel as bad to uh kind of start over because you're going to be used to building lots of little bases everywhere right mm -hmm. so hopefully they can make it something good what do you think yeah i think um 
Mm. Yeah, it's hard to say. I definitely agree with you that this can be off-putting, but I would agree. I think that having it, having the expanding campaign, the first idea, using that concept and just splitting and just having um, the areas be divided exactly how these are divided in the second yeah, idea. That makes sense. Because it just, it basically is what I was saying, is it groups, it, it makes uh, military and oil in a separate area than blue science and green science and trains. I know that's like kind of a lot, but green science really isn't that complicated. Um, and then that's like when you get trains. So it kind of makes sense for that to be in the same area. Yeah. Um, so I think like dividing it like with these topics per area is best and then just using the format of the expanding campaign is kind of what I would think. That sounds pretty good. Let's see how they agree with you in the uh, conclusion. Yeah, so basically conclusion, while these two prototypes have some large differences, there are many aspects they share. Free play will stay the same regardless of the choice here. No story, no exploration gameplay, such same tech tree as free play, all content and free play available at some point. Complex concepts, oil logistics, exchange are broken down into smaller pieces. Almost identical quest structure. Uh, these two approaches are actually very similar in the course of concepts. Or quests, sorry, uh, this is more of a decision on how we present the progression. Internally, we are still discussing which approach is more appropriate for Factorio. Um, so yeah, they're just kind of trying to find a good middle ground. Um, I know it's a ton of work, so I don't blame them, but personally, I'm pretty bummed about there not being a story. Uh... I don't know. I think that just removes a lot of immersion, but that's just my opinion. Yeah. Depends on what they think their player base is, you know, their target base. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there are a lot of people who don't want to be burdened with that stuff, and they're just like, I just want to build some automation. I love that stuff, right? Yeah. But, um, yeah, just making the world feel more alive and immersive in some way even without direct story, is always pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And they've been doing that with their graphical updates and their idle animations of the environments and things. So if you can kind of get a feeling of the story from just natural things happening around, that would be pretty tight. Yeah, I definitely agree as well. I mean, you're launching a uh, rocket up into space. Maybe when you uh, drop the satellite there, you get to see a little bit more of the world and... Uh, there lies a story campaign or something, you know? That'd be cool. I think that would be really cool, actually, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's basically the main thing of the Friday Facts. Uh, hopefully they figure out something, you know, that's acceptable to them and to most players. And then last really quick thing here, Community Spotlight founder player Speedrun, uh, over the last... Weekend YouTuber The Spiffing Brit hosts a server with the goal of completing speedrun with 500 players online at the same time. Uh, there were two streams in total, one on Friday evening, another on Saturday, Sunday. Things went a lot more smoothly on Sunday, and we managed to reach a peak player count of 462. Spiff has edited down the stream from Sunday into a much shorter video, so those who could not attend can enjoy this and spectate. Um spectacle um there will be some further attempts to set a new record soon with some upgraded hardware just recently well organized server on sunday has confirmed the order of a 990k with 10 gigabit networking um that's insane 500 players at once um, that wow that's that's awesome for them to be able to handle that oh my gosh not many like smaller indie game companies can handle that on a single server that's crazy yeah that's insane um this is like crazy i mean a as a test i think it's really cool realistically i don't think it ever works to have this many people because you're never ever 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 going to have a coherent like idea of, of like a coherent goal <laughs> like yeah. even if you say there's a goal it's just not gonna happen period like with that many know. people it, uh, have you been on those like uh, community Minecraft servers back in the day? Oh, I mean, that was back then. But yeah, I guess you're right. It can happen. A lot of it's going to be the wilds, but you're going to hit those magical moments 
that define your childhood or something, you know? It's, uh, it's got some cool possibilities. If Factorio keeps a high enough uh, player base and has some just kind of public servers running all the time with high quality, uh, you know, low, low ping and good stability. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It'd be pretty cool. Did you watch much of this while it was happening live? Um, I didn't see any of it. I didn't even oh, know it was man. happening until this. <laughs> uh, it was pretty funny where, like, you had so many people that at the beginning they were just going and uh, pickaxing uh, the the biters and the bases. Yeah. And there were enough people to, like, make it work. That stopped working after a certain point, but, like, it was pretty cool just to see. That's hilarious. You know, <laughs> the, the hive mind of of players going in and just having a good time. Mm hmm Man, that's that's crazy. Um one one other good thing about this is it probably brought quite a bit of publicity to Factorio. I mean Spiffing Brit is a huge channel. Yeah. Um so I think that definitely brought some publicity to the game, which is awesome. I was seeing various posts about it uh across Reddit on different subreddits, you know programming and gaming and all sorts of things it's just kind of a cool achievement to see um a game server like this which is like Victoria is designed for multiplayer but i don't think they ever planned for this level right no so for them to reach it that's super cool yeah that's really awesome huge achievement yeah um but yeah good job guys good that was job. really cool for sure i think that's gonna do it for this friday facts um Good stuff, as always. Uh, you have any last thoughts? I'm hoping we will hear some more about the tutorials. Let's see if they're if they're releasing in like nine months. Something then, like that. Uh, yeah, September. Yeah, I wonder if they will have uh, the tutorials available beforehand, or if they're gonna kind of release them without testing. You know. They better um, get some testing in there. Just schedules get a little tight before uh, release deadlines like that. Yeah, I'm sure they're gonna get some testing in there. They would be foolish not to, and yeah. they don't strike me as foolish. So, <laughs> no, it's a, like lots of user testing is definitely their style. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, so let's hope they can manage that. Lots of work ahead. But until next time, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoy. Leave your thoughts below and on the forums and Reddit, and we'll see you later. Catch you later.